Over 70% of Americans are either obese or overweight. Now, a lot of people are quick to disblame their genetics and say, oh, I was born with a slow metabolism, this is why I'm fat. But I'm here to tell you that's not what you should be looking at. How come some people can just eat all the junk food in the world and never get fat, and someone else has to stick with the salads and stuff and never lose weight? Well, first off, I'm here to tell you that that person that's eating all that junk food, just because they aren't fat, it doesn't mean that they're actually healthy. They could still have really high insulin, they could be at a higher risk for getting diabetes, so there's a lot of stuff that could still be going on, you just won't see it. If you're overweight and you're trying to lose weight, you have to really start looking at your diet. And you know, there's a little problem with all these different diets out there, like there's keto, or there's fasting, or there's low carb, or there's low fat. All of those different diets are just gimmicks, so they don't really matter a whole lot. There's one thing that does matter though, and this is the one thing that's gonna help you lose your weight. You wanna start controlling your insulin. Your insulin is a hormone, and this hormone is released every time you eat. So our insulin is really useful. It helps us store our sugars, and store them in a place where we can start breaking them down later if we ever need more energy. But the problem with insulin is when it starts storing all this energy, it also starts building up our fat. So let's say a typical person will eat three meals a day and they won't have any snacks or anything else in the middle of it, what will their insulin look like? Well, it'll look like this. So their insulin will start off a little low and then they'll have their breakfast and their insulin will spike. And then give it like two to three hours and their insulin will start to come back to normal. And then again, they're gonna have their lunch, their insulin's gonna spike again, and then again, give it a little two to three hours, and then dinner again, same thing. So your insulin will spike every time you eat, whether you eat sugars or protein or anything. Now the key here is you don't want your insulin to be high all the time. You want it to look kind of like this chart here. You want your insulin to go up and actually store those nutrients for energy, and then you want it to come down and be normal again. But the problem is not everyone's insulin looks like that. Now instead, let's say that this person doesn't just have three meals. In between their meals, they start snacking on different foods. So their insulin, instead of being down like this, it'll actually stay high. So it'll look kind of like this. Now you can see here that this insulin never had time to go back to normal levels. So the problem here is, over time, your body will start to get resistant to this insulin. You'll have so much insulin constantly in your body, and over time, your body just won't react the same. And eventually, your body's gonna start needing more insulin to get the same response. This is what it looks like for a lot of Americans who are either pre-diabetic or actually diabetic. Now, what happens with your insulin is, now it starts going even higher, and it starts taking longer to come down. And when your insulin is constantly high like this, this is what mimics a slow metabolism. And your body's not gonna be in this mode where it starts burning fat. It's gonna constantly be storing fat. I see this all the time, where people are trying to be so good with their diet. They're eating their breakfast, lunch, and dinner so healthy, but then in between those meals, they're snacking on all these foods because they're so hungry. But they still think that they're healthy because they're eating healthy during those main courses, but they're never giving their insulin time to come down and get to a normal level. So something I tell these people is, you gotta treat your body kinda like a new puppy. If you give your puppy some food, they're never gonna know when to stop eating. They're gonna eat the whole bag and probably puke and then keep eating again. They don't know when to stop. So you have to treat your body the same way. So what do you do? You give your puppy specific eating times. You say, my puppy's only gonna eat at noon and at 5 p.m. and I'm not gonna give it any other food any other time. You have to treat your body the same way, especially if you're trying to lose weight. Now the problem is, if you've been trying to lose weight for so many years, but you just haven't been able to, your body's probably had so much damage done to it because you've been doing the wrong things for so many years. So it's not gonna happen overnight. Now some of you might say like, what do I do if I'm hungry? I eat two to three meals a day, but in between them I have to eat something. Well, just like you would treat a puppy, give yourself specific snacking times. Don't snack randomly throughout the day, Start snacking at one specific time every day. And also you wanna try snacking on foods that will not spike your insulin so much. So if your typical snack is like Doritos or goldfish or Cheetos or crackers, those foods are gonna be terrible for you. They are full of refined carbohydrates and those will spike your insulin a whole lot. So instead if you snack on things like fruits and vegetables, that will be a lot better because it won't spike your insulin as much. Yeah, they still have sugar in them, but the fiber in them will help not release that insulin as much. Or you can snack on things like nuts or avocados and get some of those healthy fats in. Now, if you're really trying to recover from being overweight, you still wanna be really careful with how often you're snacking. 
because even though these foods won't release your insulin a whole lot, they still will a little bit. So it's better to avoid it as much as possible. So one reason a lot of these different diets work, it's not because they're cutting out carbs or they're cutting out fat. One isn't right versus the other. It's because they're cutting their calories. So when you're cutting out certain foods, naturally you're gonna eat less throughout the day. So obviously if you eat less calories, you're gonna lose weight. But also in a lot of these different diets, people are controlling their insulin levels in different ways. For example, if you start fasting, there's many different ways to fast, but let's say you only eat two meals a day. You only eat at 2 p.m. and you only eat at 8 p.m. For the rest of the day, you're giving your body plenty of time for those insulin levels to correct themselves. But just because a diet works for you, it doesn't mean that that's the only way to lose weight. Now, the second thing that you need to start doing if you wanna lose weight is you need to start exercising. But specifically, you need to exercise in a way that's gonna promote fat loss. So one way to lose fat is to actually exercise at a low to a medium intensity, but for a longer period of time. So one thing that I like trying is walking at a really high incline on the treadmill and only walking at like around 3.5 miles per hour, but I walk for like 30 minutes at a time. So it's not super hard, but you really gotta be committed to walking those whole 30 minutes. This is actually better at burning fat than just going for a jog outside. Also, you can try high intensity interval training or HIIT training and also resistance training. Both of these have also been shown to promote fat loss. And I actually have some studies that are proving that, so I'm putting a link to those in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked that video, and if you haven't already, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel below. I will see you in the next video.